it's Kelly. And I am here with a scrapbook layout share from the scrapbook retreat I went to as I'm doing the this live. I went last week last weekend to this. And I did 75 pages. Okay, so I'm trying. I'm hoping we don't get too much of a glare off pages. I'm just going to do a little test. Ooh, and I've got some pages coming out here. We'll just flip them. It's okay because well, I am going to be pulling these apart um, pretty quickly. So I'm just kind of waiting a little bit because I think I'm going to have a couple more people joining us. And let me see if I can kind of get that. Okay, that looks like it's fairly well presented. I'm going to apologize for any glare, but they're still in the um, album, and I'm going to leave them that way because they're better off. I'm, I'm just always afraid that if I take them out, that they're going to end up getting knocked around or lots of other things that can happen. So I'm going to, just going to do that and hope that all works out okay. So, a couple of things. Hey, Nancy, glad to see you back. Hey, Tammy. Yeah, I was live a little bit. You can go back, but you're going to see the layouts I did last weekend. So, let's talk about some things and how I scrapbook when I go to a retreat. First of all, I pack half my scrapbook room. <laughs> I'm not, maybe I'm not facetious, facetious about that either, by the way. I do pack a lot of my scrapbook room when I go to a scrapbook retreat. I pull my paper envelopes and I do have scrap room tours so that you can check that out to know what my scrap room looks like currently. And you'll see how I organize. But I pull my paper envelopes, put them in um, some file dividers from Copper Hopper, and that's how my paper is organized. I put that either below where I'm working, next to where I'm working. Sometimes if there's an extra table, I'll put it on an extra table either behind me or next to me. Kind of depends on what's going on at the particular crop. Um, I crop in two places, and actually we're going to be down to one because we just had another retreat center close um, outside that we were using. And now my other, I scrapbook with two different groups, one twice a year and one once a year. Um, but anyway, so we're changing retreat centers. So I kind of know the lay of the land of those two retreat centers. The other thing I do is the wicker baskets that I store my embellishments in on my desk come with me. The, um, the little flower pot, here it is, that I store my tools in comes with me. The little basket, let me grab it, that I store my pop dot or my pop dots, my enamel dots in come with me. So as much as I can, and the wicker baskets I'm talking about for my embellishments is this. Ah, oh no. <laughs> I just had a whole bunch of things move on me here. Hold on. I created a disaster trying to show you guys that. And I had it all organized, so this is not good. Anyway, I'll keep talking as I rearrange this back to the way it was. Um, but I try to create a situation where my things that I'm working with at the retreat are basically the way that I work with them when I'm home. Um, I obviously can't completely do that. I don't take my big Caterpillar Pro Trimmer. I do take a smaller um, Creative Memories Trimmer that's really a nice trimmer that I'm toying with not using my Cropper Hopper anymore, kind of playing with that, um, but we'll see. I also take my lights with me because we don't have a lot of light. And then from there on, I don't store them things the way that I do when I'm here, but I do try to take the things that I use most. So I take wood veneer, I take my label stickers, um, I take my die cut labels from LA Studio. Um, I'm trying to think, I do take my baskets, I'm not even gonna pull them out, but I have, store my thickers and baskets. I take my two thickers baskets so that my process feels somewhat the same as it does when I'm in my, in my scrap room here at home. That's really helpful for me. 
Um, it may be for you, it may not be. But that's so, that's kind of to start out, that's how I lay things out. I do not pre prep, pre plan, make sketches of anything like that. I print my, I bring my um, photo envelopes with me and I just start pulling things that inspire me to scrapbook. Uh, I will tend to, like this year, you'll see this later on. I did a lot of Christmas layouts the very last night I was there. I brought my Christmas supplies with me and just scrapped until I was so tired of doing Christmas layouts I couldn't anymore. Um, but other than that, I kind of scrap. I just pull. I know what I brought with me for paper lines. Um, and I probably, the Cropper Hopper um, folders are about this wide. And I probably had six or seven of those with me this time. I'm bringing, I bring a lot of paper because I bring things so that I can just scrapbook what inspires me. And that's, I think, how I get so much done. Now, we also go from, we arrive at Thursday noon. I usually leave by noon on Sunday. We go out to dinner on Thursday night, take time for other meals. But I scrap a lot over the course of that weekend. Um, on Saturday, I think I scrapped from about, nine in the morning until midnight Friday night um, on Friday I scrapped from about eight in the morning until probably about 11 so I'm scrapbooking a lot of hours in a day that's how I'm getting this stuff done so let's go through the layouts feel free to ask me any questions you want to so this is um Paige Evans new line that I'm using here by the way her brand new line um just a card now, I didn't, I did do this one so that you can pull it out, you can open the card and the, um, and it won't stick. Like this is a sticker here, but I, um, or a die cut, I should say, but I only glued it here. And that's the same here. I only glued it along that edge so that you can still open that up. I may, when I get this into its permanent home, um, cut along the edges here in some way, shape or form so that I can open it up just using this. And that's, I've done that before where I just open, um, you know, I'll just cut in the, pa in the page protector. This is not in the page protector it's going to end up in though. And that probably won't happen actually until um, for, for quite a while. So, and then this is um, Mother's Day, and I put 2021. It should be 2020. Oh, no, it is 2021 now that I think about it. So this is going to need to go in my 2021 album, which is fine. Okay. So, oh, thanks. Thanks, Carrie. And welcome, Charlotte. Hello to you. Okay. So double page spread here. This is what I do when I have lots of photos. So this one, I didn't have quite as many. You'll see others along where I have multiples of these. What I do is I do a two page layout and then I pop a photo sleeve in between. This is something new I just discovered at Hobby Lobby. They make the four by six photo sleeves portrait. They also have them landscape and that was the only one I knew about prior to this. So if I'm only, and you'll see this, I think in this particular, oh yeah, you can see it in this particular case. I just slide them the other way, it's fine. So here they're all portrait. But here I have two landscape ones, so I just turn them. The same thing happens. I think that's a little easier to see when they're turned this way. And you just kind of have to turn your head sideways a little bit. They're a little easier to read if you have to turn them, but that's fine. And then, so let me talk about what I did with the layout here um, with the two pages here. And since this is loose, I can do that. So I common, they're not exactly the same but they have the background paper in common and then the stripe paper. I just flipped them just depending on how they were. I used um, lots of ephemera from Chamel's, um, one of Chamel's older collections, Field Trip, and then a dinosaur sticker sheet that I had label stickers, made it pretty easy. And then because I didn't have enough photos to completely fill all these openings. I made little cards and added stickers to them. On this one, I did more journaling here. Um, and this is just about a little uh, trip that my uh, grandson and I made, included the museum brochure, which is always fun. Okay, so this is another one. This is one where I can show you, oh wait, nope, it's not. I just have a lot of loose pages in here. 
um, you know, albums are not meant to hold 75 pages. So um, that's, you know, that's why they're opening up. So uh, pretty good, Charlotte. I think everybody was pretty good. We determined that most people have warm weather. So this one is fairly simple. Um, uh, that's cool, Carrie. And I, I was laughing about it, by the way, because we used to put stuff in four by six photo sleeves. I'm back to doing that again, but I'm not scrapping all these photos on 12 by 12 pages. That would be insane. Here I used um, an Amy Tangerine paper, and then I have a sticker sheet about princesses from Pebbles, and then some label stickers. And then one of the girls that was there had a bunch of Disney stickers that she gave me. So I used it for princesses, like this is Belle and Belle sticker and Cinderella. Um, Snow White here and then just added the labels kind of through there. Um, Miss M number three got to go visit all sorts of Disney princesses with her mom and two grandmas and this was before we went to Disney which is why I did not go because we gave the other grandmas some grandma time with her. Here's the other page and again just using trying to use the stickers that belong to at least some of the princesses there and then just pictures of them because they did walk around the zoo a little bit too here. So that's that one. Lots of two page layouts um, uh, in here. So um, uh, and I think again the insert pages I get at um, Hobby Lobby. So you can get them lands uh, portrait and landscape. So in case you're looking for those. This is a single page. Uh, my boyfriend and I love to do music bingo in the summer. We have um, there's a a, a beer it's a beer company I guess but they don't make the beer they just it would be like a bar except it's outdoors at parks I guess and they put them in trailers and you can get all sorts of beers and they do lots of fun things they bring in food trucks and um which we've done in one of the parks we um like this park and they do music bingo to the point that we bought park stickers for two county parks in their areas just because of, it's called Tap Yard, um, is the name of the organization in my area that does it. So that was kind of fun. So I used the Music Bingo Sheets um, from one of our, uh, one of our um, Music Bingo Nights. And then I um, <laughs> stapled, I can't think of what those are. Stapled them together. The one thing that I realized, though, this is all stuck down. So I'd never be able to, and I think I stuck the photos down. I'd never be able to open them up, um, which is fine. It's just the background. So I like using background of things that we've used before. So um, just I'm just reading some comments here. Sharon said she loves the idea of you incorporating sleeves and only doing layouts for, for certain photos. Yep, and you'll see... Right now, you've seen it where I've put um, them in between a two-page layout. You'll see one where I only did a one-page layout and then just put the sleeves in, you know, right after it. You'll see that, too, tonight. Um, this one, I used some Doodle Bug um, Doodle Pops with beer, added some label stickers, and these are old Amy Tangerine um, floral stickers from a... Uh, selection and and pretzel stickers because beer and pretzels go really well together and I'm from Wisconsin I, I know that we're good at good at that um but anyway so this is just a great memory I love this photo of the two of us together too that's kind of kind of fun this was a really fun night when we were here lots of school layouts in this particular batch here so this is M number three going to meet her teacher um, and just added some apple papers. And this is an Echo Park paper collection. They do wonderful school collections if you're looking for some good school collections with really bright primary colors. Um, and in this particular case, I used a chipboard piece from the chipboard from that collection. And it's a like um, two font sort of title here that says meet your teacher. Had to get the teacher's name from my daughter-in-law to get the get that on the label and this is her totally <laughs> I, I if I'm, I'm thinking of her I picture her like that with that open mouth laughing or yelling or whatever that is definitely her 
All right, this is M number two and one, going back to school with some children. I don't know, sorry about that, parents. But <laughs> um, anyway, going back to school, just use some plaid paper. This is an um, Ellie's Studio wood veneer with some, this is all Echo Park paper again, with some clocks I was excited about. This um, book is, I think, think from Ellie Studio, but you can also get books from Shadney. It's, it's S-H-A-D-N-E-E -E on Etsy if you're looking for them with some wood veneer stars that I just got off of Amazon, found on Amazon. And then more of those Ellie Studio labels that I love to pieces. This is M number four's first day of 3K. So he was looking really cute and he had he has he has a darling smile. So and he really loves numbers and letters. So I found a number background paper that worked for him. So I thought that was kind of fun. So yeah, Sharon just said Echo Park does wonderful collections. I would totally agree. I use them for their boy collections all the time and um, school collections very, very consistently. A lot of their Easter and spring collections I love as well. All right, so that's it. And sticker sheets, these are just from the sticker sheets that go with these, a little bit of a chipboard too. And then those label stickers. You're gonna see a lot of those label stickers from LA Studio. More Echo Park paper. This is a doodle bug, one of the doodle bug um, dot stripe prints. And then this is just a yellow glitter paper that I had and she's very glittery. Um, but I love that, you know, the little backpack paper and the little backpack and then her first day of 4K trying to talk to her teacher there. So I thought that was cute, which I actually met her teacher at the zoo when I had her once, which was kind of fun. So that was kind of a fun little thing. Um, and just a little rainbow pencil. This is all, you know, the embellishments are from Echo Park, but more Ellie Studio labels again. This is something I do every year. Every year I take my photo Christmas cards and I make a page or it's been two pages until this last year. Sometimes it's been three, but my friends are getting older. So their kids are most are moving out and I'm not seeing as many of those photos. So this year, this past year, this is all I, all the photo cards I got. But what I do is I usually take a piece of cardstock. I used to completely cover it in photos, but I don't have as many more. So now I use embellishments. I always put the year. Sometimes I'll use elements from the cards if I can. In this particular case, I was just using die cuts that I owned. So that's 2022. Here's 2021. So you can see mostly, like this is what I used to do, where basically the whole, um, the whole entire page was covered. And then I have a little few little embellishments here and there with the, um, the number of or the year there. So I'm going to sit down, you guys, just because I've been standing, enough standing. Plus, it's easier for me to read. So I just love that I can go back at the end, end of the year in all of my albums and, well, not all of them, find these. I've probably been doing this for about six or seven years now. It would have been nice if I thought of this when I first started scrapbooking because that would be really fun. But it is cool to watch... Um, my friends and in this case, my nephew and his wife and two kids, um, them changed years over years and years, a cousin and their little boy now, that kind of fun. So there's my grandkids. Um, so that's just, you know, kind of a fun way to get those in. And then you, um, thanks Sharon, you just, and obviously I'm cutting them up too. So I'll do like a rough cut and then I refine the cut as I, start putting collaging these together. But it's just a really cool way to do this. Now, I don't know, in 20 years, I might not, I might look back and not know who all these people are, but that's okay too. I'm pretty sure I won't forget them or them or them. This is my sister and her husband. Here's my grandkids again too. But anyway, it, it's just a fun way to do this. All right, here's another one of those layouts where I did a two page layout with, Actually, this is a three-page layout, I think. Yes, it is. Okay. Because actually, what I really want to do with this one is this should really be flipped so that it's on the back. Yeah. 
this the two pages should be here and then this one would go here um so this is a zoo that they were at in tennessee so uh, getting as many photos as i can on a page i love to do this where i can cut them into four by four blocks and then just cover a piece of like paper that i don't love um in those blocks and or sometimes i'll just use cardstock that are colors i'm not using as much of that might go with this layout somehow i think this one is on an aqua one that's way too bright um, but this should be i i want to flip the way when this is in the book they're going to flip and then you'll go to this one afterwards you can tell that they're from the same time because she's wearing the same thing um uh, boyfriend and i just at a sunflower fest over the um Last fall, this is a lot of doodle bug here. So doodle bug here, here, the doodle bug stickers, um, and then doodle bug here. This is Bella Boulevard, but the um, Bella Boulevard is now made by doodle bug, and I think their colors really work well together. So I do tend to use those together a lot. But just some cute, fun fall themes, getting in the sunflowers. Um, another layout of. Um, two pages let's do this with two pages this is this is a good way to do it two page layout with a sleeve in the middle and here they're not matching papers from side to side they have the green paper in common they'll have like some of the animal stickers and in this case the animals are on this page but they're not exactly the same as you can see and I put some chipboard here and then there we got we got the stickers and the labels for journaling that kind of thing. So and again this is one where I had so they had a, dis, a dinosaur thing. There's six dinosaur photos and then I had three extra of animals that were important to them. So I put those um, on on there and then just kind of a little up down thing because it I don't know I wanted to get if you looked at it the width of this is the width of this green paper there so that if you were laying them side by side you'd see that which you will never see because of the way they are in the book this is one of the things i like about using a d-ring binder um, because you can pop things in and out as you wish it's a little harder if you have other kinds of binders my personal preference and i'm okay with the fact that even if I had, even if this wasn't in the middle, that these two pages are not right next to each other, I'm okay. If it bothers you, just don't use this kind of a book because you, um, you won't like that. This is an afternoon that I took my grandkids on in a town park near us. And Grandma Kelly had no restraint in taking photos. There are four grandkids, so I have to take a lot of photos to get them in them, right? Um, so I actually have two of these um portrait so there's 24 photos right here and then the three here oh this is the example I was telling you about before where here's the one page layout okay it goes with these photos because if you look here's one of the ways you can tell is there's these puffy stickers with ladybugs ladybug flower I didn't put any flowers on this um and then Here's the flowers and ladybugs here. So you know those all kind of go together and you can kind of see it, but there's no other page here. So this is another way you can do it if you don't want to make a second page and you just take, so what I did here is I did three photos. I didn't have a great photo of um, M number one here. So here he is, or, I'm sorry, here he is. He's here first, so. All right, so those are that layout. Um, this is a really sweet layout because M number one and M number four have a really special um, relationship. So just kind of documenting that. This is the is May here, so this felt a little springy here to kind of do use that. And I was using just offcuts actually of um, papers here, so that was kind of fun that I was able to do that little bit of chipboard. I was playing along with Calvin Ball, which is this crazy thing that Scrap Happy sponsors for the month of March. Go Google it. It's really fun. You have all sorts of crazy rules of things that you put on layout. So in this particular case, chipboards, bees, stripe paper, 
hearts um, on your layout somewhere, die cuts, which is what these are, were all, you know, those things were all over the place. I do like what I did here, which is I took this um, title here and the O in brother was actually the lion that you saw. Uh, that was back a little bit. Oh, here. It wasn't this one, but it's a lion that, oh, it's a lion that looks like this. And I didn't love that for this, obviously. So I just took it out and put a star there for the O instead. So that's kind of a fun way to change up your titles to make them a little bit different and more exciting. Hey, look, just a two-page layout. That's a two-page layout. So five photos here. I like to do this a lot where I just spread them across the top or the bottom. And then a lot of white space. In this case, it's red. <laughs> so Carrie said she's um, thinking about going, she kept thinking about doing like Calvin Ball. Here's the thing with Calvin Ball. Just, I don't play along even every weekend. I only really have time to scrapbook on weekends. Um, the one thing that's nice for me is I always have this crop. So I can um, do it then. And I can tell I've got a little problem here. So hold on a second. I'm just going to alter this. Ugh, these letters are not making me very happy. So I'll have to repair this when I put this in the in my page. These letters are not staying on these puffy letters. So ah, not good. This is one of the reasons I wanted to keep these in the sleeves because stuff like that happens. Um, and that way I, I'm not going to damage any of that stuff. So hang on a second. Ah, oh my gosh. All right, you guys, I'm going to just take this one out because I'm going to wreck the something here so I can repair this layout. But anyway, two pages, a lot of clustering here. And then using a frame, but a lot of times when I do frames, I use them just like I use that, which is I use it to house journaling. And I use, this is a journaling card there. So let me grab this and get this out of here. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this in here. I was having fun with this wood paper over the course of a few layouts. Um, and just using um, an old sticker sheet from Jen Hadfield. So I think this is just a regular wood paper and just incorporating chipboard and some Jen Hadfield papers here. Again, a photo sleeve with six photos in it. I didn't have enough for this side, so I just added in a photo here. And I don't, these are camera photos, my cell phone or somebody's cell phone camera photos. So they're not true four by sixes. I do not do that editing to turn them into four by sixes. Um, I printed the last time I printed photos getting ready for this. I printed a thousand photos because I hadn't done any photo printing since July, I think of last year um, or since June of last year because I didn't have any July photos and it might have been even before that because when is this? Yeah, I hadn't printed June either. So um, I'm not going to take too much time to edit things out and that kind of stuff when I do this kind of thing. But I thought this was kind of fun using just some of the chipboard and die cuts and, and clustering, clustering. I talk about this all the time, but like these balloons are touching photos. They're touching this pink paper. They're touching the wood paper. They're touching the labels. And then the butterfly and rhinestones, um, the heart are kind of all around them. So touching as many layers as I can. So anyway, Carrie, I think I interrupted myself there, but just play along with what you can, even if you only do one or two layouts. It's just kind of fun. It's just, a, it's a crazy way to challenge yourself to scrapbook differently than we tend to scrapbook. So look it up if nothing else, you guys. It's just, a, it's, it's really just crazy. All right, um, here, single page layout of my boyfriend and I. I had started using some, this is an, an, an indication of how I do this sometimes. I started using the, I pulled out my Jen Hadfield papers and embellishments. So then I went right to this layout and did this one and mixed things up and used a really busy floral paper, but kept the amount of it small on the layout. And then I also covered quite a bit of it. So that's kind of a technique if you want to use a busy paper. Because when I look at this, I don't see that busy paper first. I see the photos first. Part of it is also getting your embellishments around the photos. In this case, my embellishments are on a diagonal. That will draw your line from the upper left corner to the bottom right. That's how we read. 
in um, English speaking countries and lots of other countries as well. Uh, but that's how a lot of people read. And so your eye will naturally go in that direction. So your photos will then still remain the focus of your layout. Hey, Tamara, good to see you. Um, this is just a fun little silly layout of uh, my boyfriend and I at a wine and harvest fest last year, a really warm day in September. <laughs> and um, this is the man who used, who when I first met him said he didn't like having his picture taken. And now he takes the pictures for us when we do selfie. Well, it's not really a selfie, it's both of us, but when we do selfies um, together, because he's taller than I am. If I do it, we look a little scrunched and weird, but if he does it, he can get his hand up high enough. Um, so it's funny. And he's being silly here with his hat on backwards and, and that kind of stuff. So I love this layout. Just I've, I've had this cork paper for a while. One of my friends was at a going out of business sale of a craft store and she just bought me a whole bunch of paper because um, she knows I scrapbook. And she bought me a bunch of photo real papers, which is what this is. Sometimes those are a little bit hard to scrapbook with, but I think I like how this one turned out. I think this the title here that says Wine and Harvest is a little hard to read on camera, but it's actually pretty easy to read um, when you are, um, when you're actually looking at the layout. Just a little happiness found sticker. Old potty people, for those of us who have been around, I still have potty people. And then I got this wine bottle from somewhere. I don't remember where it was and put a little label on it for the date. So that was kind of fun. And I used a banner, you guys. You know, banners are my kryptonite, but yay me. <laughs> okay, this is a fall layout. And this is another one of those where I did a one page layout and then just put the rest of the photos into the um into the sleeves so i love love this photo of m number four um and just so just fall fun i didn't have the name of where they were until i looked at this and it says where they are so that's fine that is on there normally i would have probably titled it with that but um that worked out and i love the blue orange and green colors here especially because he's laying on that blue so i really pulled that in as kind of a third color and i think it gives more dimension um on top of it there's touches of blue here too in the sky and here so I kind of like the way that pulls that all together sometimes if you do a layout with just two colors it can look a little flat and popping that blue especially since it's a comp complementary color to that orange um, uh, um, on the color wheel it really helps pop everything all right, so there's the back side of that. Um, just a little trunk or treat layout here with the kids. My grandkids went trunk or treating three different times last Halloween, which is not normal. Usually they only go once, but this is cute because M1 or M um, M number four was Mickey and M number three was Minnie, and they're both Mickey Wild. This is actually even before we went to Disney, and then we had a Harry Potter and um, Batman there. <laughs> So my M number two is Batman Wild, which is really cute. I think it'll, I love this because you can tell what they're, what they really like in characters and that kind of stuff. So this will be fun to look at years ago. And then I talked about this before, the stickers. These are more of the Disney stickers that that friend gave me. So I was incorporating them and using them. And I have them so that when I actually do do Disney scrapbooking, I will be able to do that as well. Um, here is their, um, costumes from actual their Halloween in their neighborhood. They went as the characters from the movie Encanto. And this skirt on my granddaughter is so cute. I can't stand it. The tool on it is just beautiful. So I think this is funny. Entitled it, I had to look this up because I've seen the movie, but I forgot their family name. But I just thought it was, and actually if, if I was doing it the way they would say it in um, Spanish, they would say family uh, madrigal, but close enough. <laughs> Um, lots of clustering here using labels and stickers. There's um, a uh, <laughs> an enamel pumpkin here and then a, even a word phrase there as well too and just kind of carried that theme across here. So even though I have the two different paper backgrounds here, the layout still coordinate um, as well because I'm using the same two papers here it's just we've added a third one here because I've got um, I have some landscape photos here as well as this one I trimmed so it was a little bit smaller but landscape photos 
as well as the portrait photos. So that's kind of how I tend to do stuff like that is incorporate. I don't always do the exact same background like I did. Uh, I, anyway, I don't always do the same background, but I like to carry papers over so that you under your eye understands that the layouts go together. My steps in here. Oh my gosh. Funniest costume. And third Halloween. Um, this was for a friend's Halloween and they went as characters from Beauty and the Beast. So I titled it Beauty and the Beasts because it's my granddaughter with her three brothers, which I was very proud of myself for that because I'm not very good at clever titles, but um, I loved this one and thought it was kind of funny. Here in this particular case, I did use the same background paper, but then added in um, a little bit of cardstock and then some wood, um, some faux wood paper here as well. And I did that because my grandson here went as Lumiere, which I loved the costume here with the candles. And then he had like a hat with a flame, basically, and just um, kind of a... Uh, a tan colored little um, sweat pants and t-shirt kind of thing. I thought that was darling. Um, and so I played off of those colors in here because I thought they also went really well with the yellow in her dress. And oh my gosh, that dress, so cute. So, and then my my, my grandson is the beast and my grandson as Gaston just, again, so funny. All right. Then here, the kids went on a park date with their parents. So I did a little bit of, um, of uh, fall theme stuff here. And the background paper is the same here. The coordinating paper is the same. I just used it a little bit differently from side to side. I did this a couple of times where I made it look like this paper, like if you put these together, which I obviously can't, it looks like it continues all the way across and then I rounded corners on one of the sides there. So adding in some puffy stickers here, some labels again, just to get you know things consistent. And then just a, this is a four by six card with words on it, which was kind of fun to just do that. All right, double page layout here of a day out that my boyfriend and I did. And I kind of did this because these three photos, this is all one date day, but these three photos were taken in one place and these two were taken in another. So I kept them on separate pages to kind of, and it was kind of the timeline that we did this, that we were at an apple and um, an apple farm. And then they also had pumpkins. We went there last year and we did it again this year because they have fabulous cider donuts, um, which are amazing. I, I didn't have, I had never had one until two years ago. And now I'm really sad that I know about them. <laughs> so anyway, or not sad that I know about them. And then we went to a brewery for a concert that we had been to a couple times during the, um, during the summer to that brewery for various concerts. Um, using my favorite EK Success embossed dot punch. It's the punch that Chamel uses a lot as well too. Some letter stickers, just incorporating a little um, puffy sticker into the cluster on that pre-printed um, little four by four card, cut apart card. And I kind of like to do that sometimes so that it kind of brings the background into the foreground. All right, um, separate um, page here of a concert. We went to a group we really, this is my best friend um, that we really like, we both really like. And um, and it was hotter than all heck that day. And we went to um, a winery where they were at that we had seen them at a few years ago and have a date to do it again this coming summer, which I'm lo really looking forward to. Um, using some papers from the Simple Stories I Am collection, which are were a few years old. And I, when I was going through my papers to do this, I thought, Cal, I haven't scrapbooked with any of those in a while. So I did use them on this layout. Um, some washi tape, and I don't know that you can see this, but this is a really thin washi tape. This is actually two pieces of washi tape. And I just did one and then another one right below it to make it a little bit thicker because it wasn't thick enough for me. And because it's a polka dot pattern that worked. There's more of those LA Studio labels because gosh knows we like that. Um, this was a fun day. And this, I, you're seeing me in the straw hat because that was a fairly new hat for me. I, I really love wearing hats to begin with, but especially in the summer um, because it keeps the sun off my face. So um, we went to a sweet corn fest in a town not about an hour away from where we live. 
and like you could buy a dozen ears and then they put them in this little thing and then you um, took the husks off and um, they dipped them in the butter for you if you wanted them buttered. And then they had, I hope you guys can see this. This is, I'm gonna bring this up so you can see this. This is the craziest thing. They have a salt tree. So they have this old clothesline and then they hung salt shakers off of it and that's how you salted your sweet corn. And if you don't know about fresh sweet corn, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> Because it's amazing. It is so good. Um, if you're ever in a place where they have it, if you've never had it before, have it. Um, it is in, in the summer where I live, um, and we have a great farming country around me, but in the summer where I live, the sweet corn is so sweet. It tastes like candy. It's so good. And that salt and butter, hmm, something. So this is something that we want to do again. This is an old... Um, um, like a, a, it's a little old die cut from American Crafts and an old sticker sheet that I'm using from Vicki Booten and Ellie's studio label. And then I think this is just a piece of Hobby Lobby paper back there with my one of my favorite doodle bugs and then just white cardstock. So kind of a fun bright. And I was playing off the blue in my boyfriend's shirt with the that bright yellow sweet corn. So happy page there. Um, this is a photo of... Um, a minor league team that we have near us now. So we went to our first game on another really hot, like in the 90s at four o'clock in the afternoon day. Um, and so, as I said, where we were sitting, it felt like I was sitting on the face of the sun that day. So, I, it, I mean, we look hot. <laughs> um, and so it's just fun to kind of incorporate. Their colors are red, white, and it's really blue, but there's um, red, white, and blue in their uniforms. So that's why I was playing off all those colors. So I did grab um, a 4th of July collection and then just used a paper from Bella Boulevard and a paper from Echo Park to use the blue background there. Um, and then just clustered, 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 clustered. And yay me, I actually used a clear sticker there. <laughs> it actually worked out. So it's kind of, and this is a, um, at the time, um, she was running for governor in Wisconsin and she's a friend of a good friend of mine. So I um, texted my friend and said, Hey, you'll never guess who's here. And so she said, well, go say hello to her and tell her I said, hi, cause she was not, the friend of mine was up in Canada at the time. So I went and said hello and that kind of stuff. The other fun thing about this game is they have a bat dog. So it was so hot that day. He wasn't out much, but for like, I think an inning or two, when um, they would drop the bat, he would come out and get the bat. So that that was hilarious. Um, this page is an example of where I don't really have a photo, but I took a photo of something. So this is when I hit 100 books. I read, well, I read more than 100 books, 146 books, I think, last year. But this is on September 22nd, I hit 100 books. So I took a picture of, this is from Goodreads, which is a great app if you want to track the books you want to read, the books you have read, and make, and friends. You can friend people on it too. Um, so I set a goal of 100 books every year now. Um, I've met it the last two years, I believe. Or maybe, yeah, I think I, yeah, I think I met it the last two years. So anyway, um, this is a Vicki Booten paper, and this is from Oh, Color Story, I think was one of her last collections. So a lot of stuff I bought. I had a lot of that. This is another one of those collections that I went, ooh, I have a lot of that. I really have a ton of embellishments from that collection. I need to get using it. So I pulled that folder and brought everything with me. So that, again, as I'm starting to prep, what I'm going to do is as I'm flipping through papers, I'll be like, oh, I haven't used this for a while. And I grab that envelope and then try to scrapbook with it. Did I use every envelope of paper that I brought with me? No. Am I okay with that? Yes. I will drag all that stuff. It's fine. So this is a double page layout and um, you scrapbookers may notice somebody you know if you watch YouTube. This is Sarah Swan. So the cool part about this though is Sarah and I did not meet for a scrapbooking purpose. Um, we know each other. We've I've followed her for a long time and we know each other because we were on at least one design team together and maybe two. We were trying to remember for sure, uh, but one design team for sure. But Sarah has a booktube channel 
And I've been following her on that for quite a while and we have conversations back and forth. This is Lindsay, who is also a scrapbooker, but she doesn't have a scrapbooking channel. They both have book channels now, but Lindsay has been a follower of mine for a long time. And they, plus two other of their bookish friends, met, they, they, they do a weekend um, away now every year, and they picked Wisconsin this year, and they did a meetup of if anybody who watched them wanted to meet, we, they met in Madison. And so we got together, we met in Madison at a the student union on campus, and then of the big college there, and then we went book shopping together. And I met, um, there's, so there's another woman here who, Amy, who has, um, has a, um, a channel as well. So Sarah's is Sarah's Nightstand. Um, it's Sharon just did it, wrote. So Sarah's Nightstand, this is Lindsay. Lindsay has Lindy, Lindsay's Little Library. This is um, Krista. She's Krista from Books and Jams is the name of her channel. Amy back here is Amy's Bookish Life. So Amy's Bookish Life. And this is Amanda, who is one of the other four. You can tell they, they have their shirts on. This is Amanda. Her channel is um, The Curly Reader. So... If any of you guys um, are interested, they're great. They're really fun. Right now, they're actually doing um, a thing called Middle Grade March. But it was so cool because I got to meet them. And Lindsay and I only live about an hour and a half or so apart. And we still have not met, despite that fact that we do converse via um, <laughs> via youtube and booktube and then also she makes book sleeves that i buy so we conversed that way we still have not met we keep her still have not met kept talking about it and it was so cool to meet her it was so cool i mean when i met when i met sarah i felt like i was meeting a long lost friend i felt the same way about Lindsay, but Lindsay and i talk a little bit more back and forth than sarah and i do but it was so cool to meet all the ladies but especially um the two of them and i got a little choked up you know a big you know big big hugs and that kind of stuff. So it was, it was really cool. <laughs> uh, Sharon, that's really neat. Yeah, it was, it was just really fun. And I said, it, this is a case of your internet friends. You meet in real life and it's like you have been friends all along. So just a, just a really fun story. So now I plugged their channels. Go. If you, if you like reading books, they are so much fun. The four women here call themselves the book two besties, which is where that title came from. Um, and if you can't remember channels and that kind of stuff, just let me know and I'll, um, I'll let you know. Oh, there is, um, I'm trying to think, oh, I can't remember because there, there's another girl, another girl, another woman back here and I can't remember her, her title name. It's Beaches and something, but anyway, sorry. I was going to tell you it, but I can't remember it. So, um, this is Paige Evans' new collection with the Shadney books in it. So this is all Paige Evans' new collection here, which is really fun with um, a doodle bug paper here. So again, here I've got, you know, the two page layout, not exactly the same, but I'm carrying a page through. So <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay, Harmony, you can come up. I think I'm only about halfway through. And how far in are we? 47 minutes in. I knew this was gonna be a long time. All right, anyway, so there's a plug for everybody's channels. If you don't remember, sh shoot that to me um, in the comments, or if you hop on this later, shoot it to me in the comments, and I'll give you their um, channel names because they're awesome ladies. They're so, so much fun to follow, and have they the four of them all read a little bit differently, have some things in common, but great book recommendations. All right, so... Um, next page is using um, more Vicki Booten here, and this is a page I did about Hurricane Ian, um, and this is the effect it had on Marco Island. The these are photos of the condo that, and the condo I stay in is actually their lanai is this lanai right here, and then this is the view that I kind of have mostly kind of have when I'm looking down. Well, this is this is a driveway. And so is that, and it looks like a river. So when Ian happened, um, I 
was happened to when it hit I happened to be at my best friend's house this is that's who owns this condo it's the place I go in Florida every year when I go to Marco Island this is where I go um and I happened to be with them when the hurricane hit and they were waiting to hear how their condo fared and um they got these pictures while I was there and then she sent them to me later so I documented that just because it's important this is the second hurricane that the condo has been through since they bought it. So it's just something to kind of document and um, do that. But I like how this is actually a sky paper from Vicki Booten and then this, like, you know, a wave paper. Um, and I just felt like that really keeping it to, you know, blues, dark colors helped it have a really stormy feeling. Um, and it kept it really monochromatic because it's all blues or aquas, which is in the blue family. Did add a little black here too. So anyway, just something that I wanted to remember and get documented. Um, this is um, a photo. This photo actually goes back with these photos. So this is um, us, uh, the pile of books that I got when we were book shopping. This is a new bookstore in Madison, Wisconsin, used bookstore that I love that when I get in that neighborhood, I go back to now. But I had this... Um, book paper. I don't remember where this came from. I don't remember what collection this was from anymore. But I grabbed that because I thought it would be a fun background. These are all the books that I bought when I was with those guys because we went to two different bookstores. One of them, there was really nothing there, but the other one had a ton of books. As um, they, each, they brought each of us a book that we could pick from, like, I don't know, we had eight books or whatever. And then the rest of them are things that I, I bought <laughs> at the bookstore. So um, just added in some old Studio Calico cork that I had. These are those Shadney books again. Um, some old Ellie Studio die cuts. And then this is a Bella Boulevard heart paper. This is a Bula Bella Boulevard paper from the um oh it's the children's collection which i can't remember the tiny tots yeah tiny tots but tiny tots 2.0 if that helps so um could be so carrie thinks that the um book papers from a covid collection that she had so i only had one sheet of it so it might have been something that i found sort of like in i don't know so Oh, thank you, Harmony. She said the paper is Photo Play Notting Hill Bookstore paper. Thank you. I guess this it must be something that I found just a sheet of it when I was at a scrapbook store, which I don't do very often anymore because we just don't have them around. I think we have, well, we have one really in my, there's another one, but they don't really have anything new. They haven't had anything new in more than a year, but I only have one scrapbook store in my area now, and it's really mostly stamps and loose paper but maybe I saw that there so anyway thank you for that that's nice because I I did not remember that Ellie studio card there all right um then if you know I'm from Wisconsin I am a packer backer <laughs> through good and bad and we're all holding our breath for next year we're just um yeah anyway <laughs> if you follow football you know what's going on um, but so we were at a game, um, one of my closest friends and her husband have, um, tickets to a couple games a year and they invited us to a game last year in October, which it was just gorgeous. Um, and it was actually, they won this game and then went on to lose a lot of games in a row. So beautiful fall day, gorgeous day to be at Lambeau Field. Any day is gorgeous to be at Lambeau Field though. I've been there in the rain. Not in, not in anything too cold, but I have been in there in the rain and it's been fine. So because the Packers are green and gold, I um, do a lot of times when I do layouts about them, I do yellow and green and flip them depending on the need. Adding in some wood veneer here, some labels again. Um, hard now because you don't get actual tickets there on your phone. So I had to screenshot my ticket so that I could kind of remember it. I guess I like to use tickets if I can. So there's a little um, a little tip for you is to screenshot tickets if you have them. This is a single um, uh, photo of my brother when we were up at that 
concert at the winery that you saw the layout of before. My brother lives up in that area and we went to a restaurant and I told him we were going there. And so he and his girlfriend met us. So he's my baby brother. I like, which is why I titled that, that um, using just, yeah. so I had kind of aqua on, which is why I pulled this color in. And then he had a, um, well, <laughs> a, um, a 4th of July themed shirt, which was, um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> so I wanted to pull in the, those red, white, and blue colors. It was around the 4th of July and just added in, these are flowers from um, Creative Memories, but if you have old Prima flowers, this is a good idea to do something like this and then incorporating rhinestones in. There are, um, there are, um, some old enamel uh, star or no floral, sorry, rhinestones here from Heidi Swap, which I think dates back to the um, early 2000s. And I was very glad to finally use those up. Harmony just said that there's a similar paper in the first collection she mentioned, but Carrie's correct that um, that that this is actually this is actually from a COVID collection. So if you've got that. Um, it's the We Can Just Stay Home collection from Photoplay. The We Can Just Stay Home collection, read a book. The other one she mentioned, if you're looking for book paper, is Photoplay Notting Hill bookstore paper. I have to remember that. I might have to Google that. I can always use book paper. Okay, so that one, kind of using my notebook edge punch, which was fun. I, I have lots of soccer photos to do because one and two M's are in soccer now. So this is a picture of them on the last soccer game of the season for both of the boys. So M2 is here and M1 is hiding in there. <laughs> so yeah, you guys, thank you. Um, so this is just a, a soccer collection from Reminisce is where most of this came from. Um, and then I just added in these enamel dots came, uh, enamel soccer balls came from Shadney. These are sticko stickers right here. This one, these are the Shadney things. And then the phrase sticker, this paper, these, all these embellishments other than those, this is all from Reminisce. So <laughs> that's a great idea, Sharon, is to um, screenshot them. Yeah, that fun, fun book paper. I know Shamel's had some book papers um, in her collections, but you probably can't get a hold of them anymore. So yeah, Shadney is fabulous. I do lots of things. I have um, lots of different kinds of, I've gotten like makeup things for M number three. I have just cameras from her. Her wood veneer is fantastic. Her enamels are fantastic. She has enamel buttons that are fantastic as well. Um, this is uh, Grandma Kelly's. One of one of the outings we do every year is I take my grandkids to the zoo in Madison. And so we're having a little zoo adventure here. Um, there was a little challenge in um, Calvin Ball to use a craft background. So that's what I was doing here. And I did it here, except I accidentally covered up the whole craft background because the photos were so wide. But anyway, so I've got the, you know, like, again, that diagonal paper, but it's used differently on both pages, but you understand that they go together here. And then to pop color a little bit, I added in, um, when I found embellishments, I had a little bit of um, aqua and yellow. And then I found that red heart and kind of like the way that looks because there's red over here. Um, so aqua, yellow, green, blue, and craft. And it um, that yellow and red just pops up the layout quite a bit. And then here, adding in um, some fray stickers with some of these little puffy hearts from Ellie's studio. And I did that on this back side as well, too. In this case, I put them on the outside of the page protector, which... I may need to go through, and since I'm doing it, I'm just going to do it right now. I'm going to add a um, glue dot to the back of that because it's not sticking. These puffy hearts don't always stick on very well on the outside of page protectors. So I, and since the label's already there, I'm going to leave it there and I'll just add that in because that, that was shifting a little bit. Sometimes when I do this, I am doing repair. All right, 
this was cool. This bear came up. We were eating lunch and the bear came up um, and um, and was like right, literally right outside the window. This is M number one's hand that the bear is, well, well here you can see it. He's sniffing. He's not really sniffing it because he can't smell it, but the kids were just, thought that was the coolest thing. Um, Harmony, this is actually, this is the zoo in Madison. The dragon zoo was the zoo in Milwaukee, but the dragons are not a full-time installation. They were a special installation. All right, another two-page layout. This is Bella Boulevard here. I think this is all Bella Boulevard, except for the labels. Um, but I was using the, this is the Tiny Tots 2.0 collection. I love this rainbow paper. Um, and one of the stickers from that, the like little zoo stickers and that kind of stuff here. Um, this was, these hearts happened because behind that bee, that chipboard had touched, uh, one piece of chipboard had touched that bee and had, pulled off some of the, um, that background, that dot background. So I put a heart over it and then added a few other hearts so that it sort of looked and blended together properly. So, and this is funny. It says, I'm sorry for what I said, um, before my nap, actually he had just gotten up and his brothers and sister were trying to drive him crazy. So he wasn't very happy about that. So anyway, kind of a cute little thing. And I have a hard time using, um, speech bubbles unless they're coming out of somebody's you know head <laughs> so, or mouth all right another soccer layout using much the same um things shadney again here ellie studio label and then those stickers from that soccer collection there and then a photo another photo real paper so i like how that's getting this in harmony look what the next page is you're appearing in my scrapbook actually so <laughs> yes yep that that exact and, and it is um you've got it right about the card so this is harmony sent me on a mission when i went to arizona in early december she wanted to see cacti with santa hats on and it wasn't quite as easy as i thought it was going to be so i took these um um photos um not I took a, a, did a video and then took some photos so um, of the cacti so I could document this later because I thought they were hilarious and then made a little mention about why I did this. This is a paper issues card because when they, I don't know if they still do this, I haven't bought from them in a while, but when they send you your paper, they send you a little card. This one, I've had this forever. It says cactus makes perfect. And then I have an old one here that says like a good neighbor, stay over there. I have issues. This was during COVID. And then um, Cassie puts a thank you note on it. They're, they're cute. But lots of sassy sayings on them. So I just incorporated this finally into a layout about cactus in Arizona. Um, found a little Santa sticker, puffy sticker, added some puffy cacti. This is from these pieces, I believe, up here are all from um, a travel collection from Bella Boulevard. And I this is one of the uh, Christmas collections I have where I got that, Ellie Studio labels. And then just did it on um, red and white and then added a little blue here because of well, I was thinking about adding the blue clouds because of the blue sky. That's how that all came about. And this, if it's not this, it appears later. But this is the end of this roll of um, Bella Boulevard tape. I loved this tape. So, um, all right. Uh, Harmony says she, that um, Cassie still does, from Paper Issues, still does send the cards, which is awesome. I, I said I haven't looked there in a while. I need to do that. I haven't been buying a ton of um, scrapbook supplies just because I have so many although I did go on a little bit of a buying spree before my last crop but mostly for these like tone on tone backgrounds um, here's where the Christmas layouts are starting and there were a lot of them ah here we're gonna have to do another little repair with these this one's not sticking so I'll have to do that later but I'm gonna pop that back so I don't lose it when I take these out I'll have to be really careful um but this is a concert for M1 and M2 and just M2's funny face here, Little Christmas. And I'm just combining lots of collections. This is not Christmas, but these were a little snowflake tape. These are some Ellie Studio chipboard, more Ellie Studio chipboard labels, um, just some star stickers. So that kind of thing. Um, over here, 
more Christmas layouts. A lot of this is um, simple stories where this is from. But these are also three different papers from three different um, companies. I have some puffy stickers. I have, these are Bella Boulevard bows because M number, this is M number three's Christmas concert with, look at that tool skirt again. So cute. I, I love having a granddaughter, especially after having two boys. Um, but she always wears bows in her hair. So I like to put bows on her layouts and just some chipboard. So this is using the remnants from all that stuff you saw putting in my um, six by eight album. More Christmas concerts. So this one is a very old American crafts paper um, from a paper pad and then some of the embellishments that went with it. And then I think this was part of the thing that inspired me for the wood veneer notes, musical notes, is that Calvin Ball had um, a music related um, prompt that you could get points for. So sometimes those things help me use things I haven't used in a while. I knew I had musical notes. So I'm like, okay, let's get those out and use them. Um, same thing if you know you have music paper somewhere. I didn't, but if I had, that would have been a great place to use it too. Um, then um, Sharon, you, Sharon has part of a comment there that says she just found a 12 by paper pad called, you have to finish that for us though. Um, this is another Christmas concert layout. So musical note again and some stars here, some puffy stickers. This is M number four, whose first name you now just saw, but that's okay. Um, and he was terrified of this concert. So he, um, um, the pictures are just precious. <laughs> so anyway, all right, two page layout. So this is, I was not here. So this is my um, stepson's um, family, his mom, and he has a brother and a sister who I don't see all that often. Ha ha Harmony. <laughs> um, so Harmony's being funny in the comments. So um, just same background paper here, really the same design. I just kind of flipped it and turned it. And um, just, you know, more Christmas stuff, different things, kind of, this is another kind of formulaic page design I'll use and you can tell you know you can use it top bottom sides that kind of stuff adding in a long title across this side but you know the two layouts uh, blend together because of the use of the paper I love the way this layout turned out this is M number three and she was baking um, sugar cookies with her grandpa my daughter-in-law's dad and I found I had this baking paper that I didn't I would have used the other side more than likely because it's a plaid on the other side, but it looked really cute. And then I happened to find this other paper, not the same collection that matched and just, you know, pictures of her going across. I had one extra one of the cookies brought that down. Lots of Ellie, Ellie Studio remnants here. More bows. Again, I told you why I like to use bows on her layouts. Um, and then of enamel dots to pull together, some word stickers. So this was fun, just using remnants again of all those different collections that I used in my six by eight. Um, double page layout here. This is a an acrylic from Colorcast Design from this year, and I had a bunch of them and didn't use many of them in my book. So I'm using them now. Um, later on and I'll have some for next year too. Some little foam Christmas tree stickers. There's so many photos on some of these layouts that you don't need to do a lot to embellish them. So really it's just this, which is the title, because this is their Christmas day here. Um, just the title here, and this is an Ellie Studio card, the little foam trees. That's the only embellishments really. And then kind of that striped paper acts as sort of an embellishment as well. Again, this is really the same layout, if you look at that. So photos across the top, photos across the bottom, top, extra photos at the bottom. But two really different looking layouts, but exactly the same um, bones to the layout. All right, and then here's another one where I'm using the... Um, 
you know, kind of the same stuff. Well, it is the same layout because look at <laughs> this is good. Exactly. This is look at this exactly the same layout. In this case, even to the fact that I have the journaling box there. See that title here. Title here. In here, I've got um, a little bit different embellishment. There's embellishment here and here and then here and here. And then I did do a photo sleeve in here, but I did put the fo the photos in this particular case on paper, the same paper that was underneath here. Um, <laughs> that's funny, Harmony. Isn't it true, though? So, but really, so now I've had three layouts in a row and it's interesting because they are going to glow, go really close to each other. I think this was about the time I was getting tired of scrapbooking Christmas, honestly. <laughs> it was, because here's the last Christmas layout I did. So this is the last Christmas layout I did. Um, this is a, M number one this year bought presents for his siblings, grandpa. I don't know if he did for mom and dad, but his siblings and grandpa with his own money. And he shopped, I think my daughter-in-law went shopping with him but um, he did all his own choosing and all that. So she took pictures of that and I wanted to get that documented because he is a really thoughtful guy. He really is. Um, this is the scrapbooking group actually that I was just with last weekend, but um, this is last fall's group. We went for ice cream at one of my favorite ice cream places that's about two hours away from where I live because our crop was about an hour away. He is a kind boy, Harmony. So this is a Bella Boulevard paper and um, some Bella Boulevard embellishments here, but they're very much like the Doodle Pops because Doodlebug does make them. Some label stickers, again here, some washi tape, kind of a formula I use quite a bit. This is really similar to um, a layout, the layout I did tonight. All right, um, this, <laughs> this is the story of a paper I never thought I would use. <laughs> And it's this one. Um, I was working on doing these photos. This is my mom's neighborhood. Um, and I was working on this and I liked this paper because um, I like the color, but I didn't have another one. So this is coming from Maggie Holmes and Crate Paper, both travel collections. And I saw this and I loved how it incorporated the blue here and the paint, the peach here into that one paper. I think there's a medallion, a peach medallion on the back, which is, it came in, um, I think a collection pack or something like that. It wasn't paper that I would have probably bought. It's just the way it was. But look at that. And I love the way this looks and it feels Southwest to me. And then I just used um, some embellishments from the travel collection, the Maggie Holmes travel collection. So I, I, maybe Hol Maggie Holmes and I think some crepe paper travel collections as well. The, the sunglasses are on here because sunglasses was a thing in Calvin Ball, but look at how great it looks with this layout. So just again, tag, that it, that's one of the reasons I thought about putting a tag on there is, oh yeah, that's right, tag is in the Calvin Ball thing. So sometimes it helps embellishing and it just makes me look at um, scrapbooking a little bit differently than I normally do when I'm playing Calvin Ball. Here's where I was having some more fun with the wood paper. So this is my sister and brother-in-law with us, and we went to a distillery. Um, this is what I did for, we do an activity together for our birthdays, and their birthdays are within a month of each other. So we did a distillery tour and then a really good lunch um, at that distillery. Um, and just had fun with the wood theme here. And then I pulled out just a, I have a, um, a pack of just green embellishments and pulled them out to figure out how I could use them because it happened to be a Packer Sunday. So both guys were in Packer gear. So kind of adding that in with a little bit of gold and um, some old October afternoon washi tape. So just, just kind of fun, just playing around a little bit there. Um, this is a hamburger place where my parents used to go on dates. It's been around a very long time. Um, so my boyfriend went, this is the town that I used to live in. This is my hometown. Um, and I did live there until I moved where I live now. 
and he kept passing it and talking about it and we never got there when when I actually lived there but we were driving through for something else and stopped and had a burger and fries and I took that photo and then sent it to my mom um, because that would be very it was very nostalgic for her. I thought I had hamburger paper somewhere I didn't so instead I used these this pickle paper from it's from a die cuts with a view old old food paper pack which I have a lot of fun with every so often and just use like the red um, to pop up the red in from the names wigs and then also the red in the tomato the idea of ketchup that kind of a thing so and then just um I use this wood paper in the background because the the tables are wood for mica topped kind of a thing so just you know that for me is a nod back to that air that restaurant but unless you'd been there you wouldn't understand that oh guys I think we're on the last layout we are whoo <laughs> and I haven't even had a drink <laughs> so yes pickle paper this is um the last layout so this is an old um illustrated faith paper um and it says believe in your self which was made by Bella Boulevard at the time um and this is a picture of me last summer COVID popped up a little bit again in our area um, and was kind of high. So I went back to, oh, Sharon, that's cool. My mom lives in Arizona. Um, so we, um, I was masking again for a while and had an actual N95, which <laughs> I just about died in. Um, I bought a different kind of N95 because this has a respirator valve, which you're not really supposed to technically use, but it was what I had until I could get the ones I needed from Amazon because I didn't want to wear fabric masks anymore if I was going to be masking. Um, anyway, lots of philosophies about that, you know, different uh, things here. But anyway, so pictures of me back in a mask again. Um, and I have the love heart here, not because I love wearing a mask, but because um, I did it out of love for my clients. I loved this thing here that said this die cut that says someday it will all make sense and I hope to goodness someday this will all make sense <laughs> you know in 20 years when we look back on this or 30 years if I'm still around um but I love this paper and really wanted to use it so I like how that all came out and I believe that's it you guys so thank you thanks Penny thanks for um hanging in with me through 75 pages I'm going to take a quick drink because I've now been talking for two and a half hours. Yeah, two and a half hours, if you include the live. Um, but really, so much fun. Yeah, I have one right here. So thanks, Barb. Um, thanks, everybody. I actually have a beverage that matches this paper, look, or a glass that matches this paper. So a little bit of red wine here tonight. Um, anyway, but thanks for hanging in with me. So this is so much fun. Now I have to get the repairs made on a couple of these. I'm going to go back and find that other one as, as I'm talking to you. Um, get the repairs made on a couple of these. And then the next big thing will be to get them in. <laughs> Harmony's being funny. She said wine, not shocked. <laughs> hey, after the week I had with Linus, I deserve a glass of wine tonight. Um, but, um, anyway, it, the big thing now is to get these out of here and to get them into albums so that they're safe. So thanks, Nancy. Yeah, I, I would say between, um, usually between 60, somewhere around 60 to 70 layouts is about what I accomplish in a long, which is essentially a three day scrapbook weekend. Cause it's a half a day, Thursday, half a day, Sunday, usually, for me, we can stay a little bit later, but half a day Thursday, half a day Sunday, and then all day Friday, all day um, Saturday. So that's about normal for me. And again, in case you missed this at the beginning, I do not pre-plan anything. I try to put my embellishments and the things I use somewhat in the order of how they are at my desk here because that's just, I caught myself reaching for something once I was laughing about it. Oh, I was reaching for my embellishment basket, which was ahead of me. When I'm sitting at my desk here, I have a corner desk and it's to my left hand. Um, and I, I went to go left for it and then remembered it was out in front of me. It, it was funny. That's what creatures of habits we are. So the more you can make your workflow the same as it is at home, the easier it will be for you to scrapbook when you go out on a crop weekend or a crop day, that kind of a thing. So there's a little 
um, uh, a little um, heads up for that. Okay, Harmony's asking a question, so I'll make sure that Sharon gets a chance to... Um, ah, hey, <laughs> Sharon said thanks for sharing, and she got some book paper out of it. I totally get it. And if you're watching the BookTube besties and friends, you need book paper. <laughs> so um, Harmony, Sharon, Harmony asked, what was the name of the paper pad you found? Because it didn't show up in the chat. It just um, started. And also, Sharon, my mom lives in Green Valley. So I've spent a lot of time in that um, area. But I also have friends that live up in the Phoenix area as well, too. And a, a former client that lives up in Prescott as well. So lots of lots of people I know live in Arizona. So I've been, I need to get to see that former client up in Prescott. And I have a, um, a friend from high school that is now, how it has now moved to the Phoenix area too. So I, I predict I'll be spending a lot more time in Arizona. <laughs> so do you really? Oh my gosh, that's funny. Sharon said she lives in Prescott. So that's very cool. I'll have to remember that if I'm going to visit Prescott and let you know. So, okay. Sharon, is the, what's the name of the paper? What is the name of the paper pad you found though? Um, because you said it's in 12 by 12 and 6 by 6. I think Harmony's actually looking for the name of the pad. All right. So we'll hold on a second. <laughs> Cute. It's a mystery, like a book genre. <laughs> uh, the Garden of Books is the name of the paper pad. That sounds like fun. We'll have to share book papers when we... Um, find them. But y'all know where to get some shiny um, wood books now. And they're they're lovely. They're really nice and you get a lot in a pack. So, all right. And Sharon said, groovy thanks. Yeah, thank you, Sharon. I have to, I'm gonna have to go back through the comments so I can write down those three book um, papers to look for. And I need to go back in the comments from the live earlier so I can read those now that I can see because my eyes have dried up. <laughs> In case you missed that, if you guys weren't on the live, my cat, um, I had to have my cat put to sleep this week. So a little bit, oh, look at that. I can actually talk about it now. Um, anyway, but I'll go back and I'll look at all those sweet comments. All right, you guys, speaking of books, it's time for Kelly to put her pajamas on, grab her glass of wine, and go sit and read some books. So... Awesome, you guys. Oh, Harmony said that the Garden of Books is from P13, which I have not used any of. So that's kind of cool. I'll, I will definitely look that up. <laughs> Just an excuse for, to do another scrapbook order. So anyway, you guys, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. It was really fun chatting. And I won't see you guys next week or the week after the week after, not for sure, not next week. If I can get some time in on the weekend, I'll try to do that. But I'm not quite sure. I know what Friday night looks like and I know what Saturday during the day looks like. Maybe I'll try to get into some time on Sunday or um, at another time during that weekend. So, all right. Thanks, you guys. Have a great rest of your night with whatever you're doing. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>